News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali on TV One. And a very good evening to you and a warm welcome to Newsline Live. My guest this evening is uh, back home, uh, formerly from the Maharaja Group, but today uh, in his capacity as the chairman of the Export Development Board of Sri Lanka, we're delighted to have Dr. Kingsley Bernard on our program. Very good evening to you, Dr. Bernard. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Very good evening. Thank, Thank you for you. the invitation. Extended Thank you. To me. And it's, it's, uh, you feel that you're back home, you're back at the Maharaja Group? Yes, of course. Does it feel good to be back? Why are you not? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know, so the question today is, and it has been, we have been asking it for uh, well over a year. Where are our dollars? Where is the dollar earning strategy? And so we thought we'd ask the chairman of the Export Development Board. Uh, as chairman of the EDB, how much of exports do we do as a country? As a country, we earn approximately 15 billion US dollars annually mm -hmm. right now. Okay. Um, is that very good when you look at the historical figures? Is uh, it good or bad? Or uh, I would say it's uh, average. Mo room for improvement? Uh, there is very much room for improvement because, because if you look at the contribution of exports mm. to GDP, mm. uh, we are around 18%, right. which can be increased at least to 24, 25%. I see. So there's a lot of scope. Yes, there's a lot of scope. You know this 15 billion worth of exports that we do, how much of that do you think is remitted back into Sri Lanka? Do you, do you have those figures? No, no, I don't have those figures. But uh, obviously the governor of the central bank will be yes. very keen to, uh, to have all those 15 billion dollars here. Of course, yes. Indeed. And uh, of these, uh, what... So if I was to say, if somebody was to say to you, um, export's a good business, there's scope for improvement, you know, from 18% of GDP to maybe even 25, uh, I'd like to get into export business. What would you say to them? Which, which sector of the export industry would you advise? My pick is in the service sector. Right. Uh, IT, uh, BPM. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, that is my recommendation. Right. Especially to... Uh, small and uh, startups, mm -hmm. uh, entrepreneur, uh, small entrepreneurs and startups. Mm. I think that is one of the best sectors. Mm. Uh, and if I was to expand that and say to you, what would be the top five? Yes, uh, electronic and uh, electrical sector, mm -hmm. those products. Uh, then apparel, we cannot forget because th th that is our survival. Yeah. Uh, uh, Rubber-based products. Mm. Uh, and also organic products now newly coming up, mm -hmm. uh, spices, those are the few uh, important mm. export would products. You, what about tea? Would, would you also advise tea, that? Tea, tea is there, yes. It's, all, it's like a staple. Yes. Mm. Uh, and, um, then, and thank you very much for your questions, uh, which I've already got. 0772-300-305. Perhaps a card coming up on your screen, but if it doesn't, it's by SMS or WhatsApp, 0772-300-305. Send me your questions right through to here. Um, in other countries, um, air cargo, when, you know, when there's more imports than there are exports, usually countries uh, give various concessions to the cargo uh, call is in, you know, the cargo operators, either sea or air, especially air. Um, do we have any sort of incentives to attract air cargo operators in? Because they bring far more than they export. So it's not really worth their while to come to Sri Lanka because on the return, they're kind of empty. Uh, do you have any incentives? Uh, not to my knowledge right. right now. Is it something that you may want to look at? Uh. To, to encourage and incentivize the export market? Uh, maybe, maybe, but uh, we need to study that mm -hmm. and then uh, come to a certain conclusion. Okay. Um, so so you, don't, you don't really, it's something that you all haven't, uh, you're not looking at 
just yet, but you, yes, may, yet. you may do may, it. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Because so, it's a facilitation of service right. to the exporters. Thank you very much, but uh, you can't call us. You can only send us SMS or WhatsApp, please. No telephone calls. 0772 300 305. We are in conversation with Dr. Kingsley Bernard, the chairman of the EDB, the Export Development Board. Um, so you, you've told us that. What about in in this the organic sector? That's very that's very interesting. Yes, uh, because we know the mistake that was made in the past. But yes. what? How, how is this work planning out now? Yeah, uh, actually, we have just launched uh, the organic uh, sign mm. uh, logo uh, for our exporters. Right, as well as for the uh, the imports which are coming into the country. Mm. So that. Uh, Mark is important. Uh, the ADB has the control unit uh, for National Organic uh, Control Unit mm -hmm. uh, at the ADB. Uh, we are the authority giving, giving that certification. Uh, and with that logo, uh, there are two things happening. If any uh, substandard product, products are coming into the country. Coming in. Yeah, coming yeah. in. Organic. From, uh, yeah, that's right, organic they won't be able to uh, market those products because there is a surveillance uh, also made there. Okay. Uh, then uh, it is a say, recognition of the products available in Sri Lanka as well. Mm -hmm. The Sri Lankan exporters and uh, people who are selling locally, that is again... It's a, well, that same certification is available to them too? Yes. Right. So not only importers need to uh, mm -hmm. have it sort of certified that's right by the EDB yes I see so and also export agriculture <coughs> we, they carry that yes so is it a bit yeah. similar to the uh, Ceylon T logo yes it's a bit like some that. bit like that but uh, here uh, the accreditation bodies play a certification bodies play a role there right uh, because uh, there are about three certification bodies for uh, giving that including SLSI mm. uh, and also we have about two international uh, certification bodies here in Sri Lanka. They are, when we export, we need to have that certification. And uh, Dr. Bernard, tell us about this One Village, One Product program that you have. Who, does it, who is it aimed at and what does it do? How will it help us? Yes. Now, usually, uh, now there was an allegation uh, against EDB that uh, EDB is looking after only established exporters. Right. Okay. Now, uh, in order to uh, extend our services to small and medium entrepreneurs, yeah. Yeah. Uh, now very recently, yeah. uh, One Village, One Product program was launched. Right. Now, in this program, uh, we are making use of about 300 development officers of the government. Uh, uh, we, first, we have trained them, and now uh, they are training the SMEs. They go to them, they visit them, they train them, uh, and then uh, get them to work. So, therefore, uh, in that program, we have identified this one village, one product program. Mm -hmm. If I give you a couple of examples, please, yeah. In Jaffna district, we have gingerly, mm. uh, and also palm leaf handicrafts. Okay. Then, Cashew in Molotiv Mul district, uh, and also paper baskets in Pandua mm -hmm. uh, hats in uh, Polga mm -hmm. Likewise, we have identified right. those products, and also we have linked those manufacturers or the producers with exporters right. who are exporting. So, uh, the process is uh, working well. Mm. Uh, so, they are talents, their capacity of SMEs will develop right. and also we are expecting uh, in a uh, say within a period of time they also can become exporters. Now they are indirect exporters in that right. case so they can become exporters one day that was our final objective in this program. So currently they, they uh, export via somebody else is it? That's right. Okay. Is it because of the, why is that? Is that because the numbers aren't there or? Uh, yes, there may be a number of reasons. One is they are not knowledgeable at the moment, mm. so they need to get some exposure. Mm. Uh, the other one is they are very small, mm. 
Hmm. So that is volume wise there are issues. Uh, those are the few issues. That that's yeah. good because uh, I was going to ask you uh, in in this whole mission to convert or to increase our exports and then obviously get more dollars. Uh, do, what sort of training programs do you have, or do you offer uh, SMEs or people you know who are would like to export, who can export, yeah. but who don't know how? Do yes. you have any video-based training programs or yes. online? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, during COVID time, uh, we had a lot of webinars right. on those, and we have two regular programs. Right, uh, one on, on uh, export procedure uh, and one 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 north uh, how to identify markets and how to uh, get into export business and then how do you how how do you communicate that message uh, these web uh, are we have our websites right. facebook okay. uh, through those uh, uh, so, uh, social media we are communicating with them and also uh, in uh, some occasions we also publish uh, newspaper articles mm. uh, and newspaper advertisements uh, for disseminating information mm -hmm. and making them aware and, uh, about would, the would you also be having a YouTube channel to, to do the same thing? Because I see a lot of people yes. use YouTube nowadays. Yeah. Is that available yet or uh, not yet? Uh, we have not yet. We have Facebook and uh, we have uh, right. uh, our website. Uh, and so, uh, the, do you, you, you help? Do you have people like to mentor these people who will help them, who will assist them as well? Yes. You know, want to be... Yeah, uh, actually what we do is during these programs, we invite the experts to come and uh, give presentations. Right. And also we get the support of uh, practical exporters who are exporting, who are mm. successful. Mm. And also our staff are right. also involved in that. And, uh, uh, and you found, have you... Have you have you noticed a marked improvement in, in the number of people who are interested in trying to export? Yeah, there, there is a marked improvement. Mm. And also, now if you look at our country's economic and social problems, mm. I think the basic answer is in exports. Mm. Because we have a widening trade gap. Mm. So unless we reduce that, uh, we might not be able to find a sustainable solution for mm. our problems. So uh, this is, uh, and also at the same time, uh, the rate of our imports are much more, the growth rate, compared to our exports. Indeed. Um, and we are in conversation with Dr. Kingsley Bernard, the chairman, CEO of the Sri Lanka's Export Development Board. If you need to send us any questions, please do by WhatsApp or SMS on Zero double seven two three hundred three zero five. It's now uh, time for a uh, quick break, uh, in which we look at the um, headlines from the prime time news team, and we'll rejoin uh, Dr. Kingsley Bernard, and uh, we uh, we we'll have a couple of questions which we'll take in connection with uh, the taxation and so on. Uh, but we'll see you on the other side of the break, shall we? News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali on TV One. 700 dengue cases recorded in three days. Dengue high-risk zones declared across 15 districts. Sri Lanka's debt restructuring blueprint in May, says State Minister. Litro gas reduces the price of domestic gas products. Sri Lanka braces for heavy rainfall during weekend. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali on TV One. And welcome back to Newsline Live. I'm in conversation with the chairman of Sri Lanka's Export Development Board, Dr. Kingsley Bernard. Um, Tell me, uh, Dr. Bernard, how, how do you promote Sri Lanka's many myriad uh, items for export? Would you visit all over the world? Uh, uh, yes and no. Okay. Uh, well, uh, we uh, 
EDB as the apex promotional body mm. of the public sector, yeah. uh, we have uh, multiple roles. One is uh, we uh, have a role of monitoring, yeah. we have a role of improving the knowledge of the exporters, uh, we have the role of facilitating them, mm. uh, we have the role of uh, breaking barriers and overcoming uh, bottlenecks mm -hmm. for them uh, and policy uh, development area. Mm. So those are some of the roles that we have to play. Uh, in our promotion role, uh, one important aspect is uh, the trade fair participation. Right. Uh, how we do that is on certain uh, uh, logical criteria, Right. We select trade fairs because in the world there are so many trade fairs, but there, there are certain trade fairs which are very important and effective in mm. promoting the products. And with the years of experience, you all know where those are. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, then on that basis, we select trade fairs and get the, uh, organize the participation of our exporters. Right. Now, in those uh, right now, uh, for established large exporters, uh, we don't offer any assistance. Right. Uh, they pay their own so, passage, okay. uh, their expenses, everything. Mm. But small and medium, we pay around 50% of their uh, stall cost right. uh, and also uh, uh, publicity cost. Uh, that area. They must pay for their own travel. Travel, they must pay for their own travel, even if they are SMEs. Right, let's see. Yeah. Um, is there no chance of getting Sri Lankan Airlines to give you a bit of assistance on that? After all, they fly all over the world, yeah. and they're not flying full, are they? Uh, anyway, it may, may be <laughs> mischievous, that question. But anyhow, how about grants for exporters? What do you, what do you give them? Uh, no real grants for exporters, right? Uh, because they, they, are, they do their business, but we facilitate them. Right. And also now, whenever there are certain rules and regulations imposed by developed countries like Germany, uh, USA, or whatever the country, mm. uh, we get that information before and we give them the training how to overcome those barriers mm. and also how to uh, say improve their products quality and services because through those uh, systems uh, they always uh, develop they can develop themselves and, and, and how, sustain okay and then how kindly or not do uh, these export markets take to our handicraft items to handmade items yes now in uh, terms of duties and that kind of thing you know, do they encourage us by saying uh, it's a wider uh, social thing, of course. Uh, do some countries say, look, if you send us your handmade items made by SMEs in your country, we will give them zero duties or, or some form of encouragement. How, how is uh, that bearing? Uh, that area... Uh it's not very uh, common okay. uh, across the countries, uh, right. but uh, in certain areas where these uh, handmade products are more expensive, mm -hmm. uh, other than that, uh, they don't offer any uh, rebate or any anything like that. Right. Uh, uh, but uh, the, now the trend is for natural products and uh, uh, destination-based exports. Mm -hmm. uh, I will give you an, another example of uh, another products. Yeah. Uh, as you know, mm. cinnamon, Sri Lanka is the largest manufacturer and export of cinnamon. Indeed. Uh, and uh, our cinnamon has the GI mark. Right. Uh, geological indication mark. Right. So that is a great advantage for exporters mm -hmm. because uh, that is a hard-earned thing and uh, it gives a lot of competitive advantage. To our exports and, and and cinnamon accounts for around 270 million dollars a year yes around that yes right um excellent uh, thank you very much and um uh here we go uh obviously somebody who perhaps is a f um uh okay well i'll ask you the question dr bernard the tjc mango is supposedly the best fruit after the Columbum fruit. To get the optimum quality, this fruit has to be covered in a bag at its initial stage. But this bag is important. Why can't the bag be manufactured locally, saving foreign exchange? Yeah, that's a good idea. Hmm. So 
we we have to look at it and then you take do this. You you you'll tell your office tomorrow to do to get on this. Good. Thank you for the question. Um, let's see. Uh, there's another one is asking you, Dr. Bernard, about your student days in Jaffna University and your historic election, uncontested as the president of the Students' Union. Is that true? Yes. So that's amazing. How come? Why did there you is a the spirit of the students in Jaffna. This is excellent news. It's a little-known secret, obviously. <laughs> well, there you go. There, this is Dr. Kingsley Bernard, the chairman of the CE uh, and the CEO of the Export Development Board. Um, and here's another question here. Exporting, exporters tax, um, it um, probably dis, uh, dismayed exporters. Their tax went up from 14% to 36%. Um, is, this a, is this a incentive or is it a punishment? <laughs> From where I stand, it looks like a punishment. <laughs> That's the overall, <laughs> overall tax, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, is that, have you, do you, does the EDB have any input on this? Uh, are you able to lobby the Ministry of Finance to say that this is killing the export market, that this is working counter to us trying to bring the dollars in? Yeah, but whatever the difficulties that exporters are facing, yeah. uh, actually we are... They bring us, uh, bring to our notice. Yeah. And actually, we have uh, about uh, 24 advisory committees at the moment, the product-specific advisory committee committees. Now, when they uh, they come and discuss their issues on a regular basis, and when they present their issues, we always take up with the authorities who are relevant to that particular subject. And would you would you say that you know because you're dealing with uh, hopefully a lot more SMEs now than ever before. Um, how friendly, how people friendly is the EDP? How do you... I think that is our greatest strength mm -hmm. because we have a, a set of professionals who are knowledgeable and also who are very close to the exporters. Right. So I think that strength is there right from the beginning at the EDP. And, and how do you go into the different provinces, the different districts and the villages? How, how do and you do it? We, at the moment, we have regional centers. Right. Uh, we have one in Jaff, uh, Jaffna, Matara, Kandy, Gurunagala, those areas. And uh, we might, in the future, expand those. Uh, and also, as I mentioned earlier, we have about 300 district offices, uh, development offices, mm -hmm. working in those uh, centers. Mm. So actually the, uh, the regional development uh, division was set up uh, somewhat recently and uh, that division looks after these uh, regional uh, SMEs, exporters. I, I imagine that these are very important parts of the whole export process for the people. That's right. Um, <clears throat> thank, thank you uh, for the several, several questions here. Um, uh, <clears throat> can a reduction in electricity rates help to make our export cargo more competitive in the world markets? Definitely so. But where is this going, this whole, everything, the cost of everything is going up mm. uh, for, way, for whatever reason. How is this impacting at the ground level though? Because, you know, maybe this uh, smaller uh, hopefuls, the mm. SMEs, mm. And the startups are not um, financially capable of of taking these blows one after another. Mm. They have a they have an issue. They have a real issue. Mm. Is it something that you may be uh, willing to take it up? Who, who's your minister then? Who does this thing come under? The, uh, the, the minister board? is Ichi, the president. I see. Uh, and so that's easy. State, you you got the, first contact with uh, the president. The state minister is uh, uh, Honourable Dilum Amunukama. Okay. So, w w is it something that you can actually take up with them to 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 plug the cause of the smaller SMEs um, and the wannabe exporters, mm. uh, but who are not big enough mm. to be heard? Mm. Is that something that are you able to do? That are you able to lobby the president and the, his state minister? Yeah, we can take a take up. 
Because this, this business about the tax from 14 to 36, mm. I've got several questions on that. Mm. And it's obviously... Uh, it's a macro issue. <laughs> it is, yes. It, it is an issue. Yeah. It's one of several issues that's mm. coming over. We are in conversation with Dr. Kingsley Bernard, uh, the chairman of this and CEO of the Sri Lanka Export Development Board. Um, tell me, which of the markets, where, where is the biggest market for our handicraft items? Uh, our handicraft, it's EU countries. Mm -hmm. EU countries. That's, right, yeah. That's where the main market is. That's handicraft, yes. Okay. And also we have, we have to adapt to different markets. And do we have any showrooms over there? Uh, in uh, overseas markets, do we have any showrooms? Uh, in, in some missions we have. Within the missions in, yeah, yeah. in the embassies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. How is that working? Is that, is that useful or not really? Uh, uh, those missions are useful, yeah. because otherwise it's very, very difficult to yeah, identify. Yeah, missions are them. useful, but what about the showrooms? Uh, I, I don't, uh, because it's too early for me to uh, make a yeah, statement. Yeah, of course, you've only just joined. Yes. Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm th yeah. thinking that you've been here all your life. <laughs> yeah. Because I was there right. uh, with the EDB uh, Before. in 1990s as well. Right. Oh, that's why. Uh, in a different, uh, wearing a different hat. Okay. Uh, now uh, it's a different thing. Right. Uh, but uh, I have just joined. How, how, how intense is the pressure? Does the governor of the central bank call you up every day and say, Kingsley, where is the dollars? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at the not moment. Yet. <laughs> not yet. He's giving you time. <laughs> yeah, I think so. This is the honeymoon period. <laughs> well, I mean, do expect a call. I'm told that it's pretty tough. Mm. I mean, he, he'll be asking you where the dollars are. Uh, like the whole country. <laughs> Thank you uh, for your several mes messages. Uh, and uh, many, by the way, um, uh, Dr. Bernard, uh, congratulating you on your long uh, and checkered career in exports from this country. So, you know, thank you about that. Where do you see the next growth area? Which, which of the export things do you see? Is it the organic? Uh, Definitely in the organic area, uh, there's a lot of potential. And also as a country, we have a good reputation. Mm -hmm. So I think that is important because if you compare with our neighboring countries, mm. we, are the, we are, I think we are the best. But of course, the, the IT uh, boys and girls must be up in arms because um, their electricity costs have gone up. Uh, we had power cuts before, and these people couldn't, just couldn't do their job. Mm. Um, what can the EDB do with them, short of giving them generating sets, gen sets, you know, jennies? Mm -hmm. But what, what, is there anything specific that you can do for that group of people? Uh, actually, uh, if you look at the power generation area, yeah. I don't think that uh, that is still pertinent right, right now. Okay. So we have not worked out anything Nothing in else. that area. But uh, your, your general outlook, we have yeah. got the last minute here. Mm. The general outlook uh, is positive? It is positive. It is positive and also mainly in the service area uh, and also electronic and uh, electrical uh, area. Uh, those are the two uh, main areas. So what's the take-home message as the program comes to an end? Export, export, export? Yes, I think uh, we need to, uh, say, create a export fever right. in each and every citizen in this country. Indeed. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Kingsley Bernard, for being on Newsline Live. Much appreciate your presence. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. And that is the way it was on uh, Newsline Live this evening. It's now time for the primetime news. Take care, have a great evening as much as you can, and of course, God bless you all.